Let's go. My boy got him a little kitty kit ball. Little lane train ball up in this bitch. <laughs> Choo-choo! Welcome to, I would say, uh, would you call it episode number one, Hundeezy? That's it. Yes, sir. Episode one. Episode one of the Blind Mule podcast. This is exciting and terrifying at the same time. I wonder, um, you know, ideally I'm thinking we're going to bring some value to these folks, uh, but I guess we will find out in due time. Whether it's value or entertainment, we'll bring one or the other. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know if you know this guy, um, Patrick McDavid. He's mm-hmm. got a thing where he just combines those two. It's called valuetainment. And I'm like, see, this guy, he gets it. Yeah. He's pretty good, too. He's, you got to listen to him. But, uh, okay. So, the for we may do maybe a deeper dive on some of this if you'd like. I know we've kind of talked about it a little bit, but the kind of the intentions behind – you know, the Blind Mule podcast, where it comes from, why we named it that. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll just do it. We'll just do it. We'll kind of talk about it for just a second. We'll riff on that for, um, what, five, ten minutes, and then maybe people can listen to that if they, if they care. So, yeah, uh, we can give a, a more in-depth intro later. But. Yeah, for us um, each, you know, because not, you know, who cares? People don't, we're, we're, we're from the Delta, you know, or from Mississippi, and then, you know, other than that, people really don't care. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, the title of our podcast is The Blind Mule Podcast. I mean, it's a play on life itself. Sometimes you go in life, bl- go into things in life blindly. You don't really know what's going on. You don't really know how to handle situations, but you figure it out. So the title came from a saying that my granddad used to say all the time, don't worry about the mule being blind. Just get on the wagon and hold the line. There so you, go. you can take that however you please. You can put that into a spiritual twist and say, you know, have faith in God and he'll lead you in the right direction. Or you can just, whatever you may believe in, you can have faith in the universe and the universe will take you where you're supposed to be. So, yeah. uh, I love it. Don't worry about that, that, that mule being blind. Just get on, just get on the cart and hold the line, man. I love it. My granddad, Mr. Henry was somebody that was near and dear to both Kelton and our hearts. So yeah, it just seemed fitting to title, the podcast, the blind mule. Yeah. So we're just a couple of jackasses trying to figure it out, you know. That's that's fact. Yeah. But <laughs> today for episode one, we are going to dive into the power of storytelling. Um, kind of analyze storytelling in the form of books, yeah, movies and podcasts. But to begin, we'll just talk about the culture of storytelling in the South and you know what makes a good storyteller. Who have we run across in the past has told great stories. Um, so let's dive in a little bit. Kevin, yeah. what you think? The, one of the most important things that we as humans do, storytelling. I mean, before, obviously before, you know, anything was written, it was nothing but passed through, you know, word of mouth. And, uh, you know, I, I, I find something that's incredible is that storytelling, you know, like I said, is so important, but it, it touches everything everything we do um and what's i think fascinating is that you know the difference between like a good storyteller or just a good story in general being told whether whatever medium you know that could be through music or movies or like you said any any medium there is a structure to it that you know resonates very well um and i find that it's super interesting how the different ways you could do it You know, it's not like intro, backstory, climax, ending. There's so many ways you can, you know, really, really adjust and structure some of that. And so I think that's super cool. Um, But you were talking about being from, you know, the South. And everybody's got those, uh, what do you call them? Idiosms or um, what what are the, like the sayings, you know? Yeah, yeah. My granddad... I had sayings all the time, but right now in this place, Rush McKay <laughs> is the man, the king of storytelling. Of one-off my- little quotes and storytelling and sayings and stuff. <clears throat> if you don't know, you know, well, I don't know who's listening or who will listen, but Rush McKay is a hoot. He's out of pocket, man. Yeah, he's a, 
it, the characteristics of Rush that makes him a good storyteller is that whenever his mouth is moving, he's lying. Right. So <laughs> the majority of his stories are 85% lie, 15% truth. With a little bit of truth sprinkled in there. Yeah. yeah. The truth is, you know, the foundation of the story. But everything else is just flair that it's, makes the story. It's tremendous. like that. It's like that game, like two lies and a truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Rush goes to nine lies and a truth. So. So um, yeah. I'm glad. Thanks for answering that because that's exactly who I thought of when we started talking. When we were kind of brainstorming about you know first topic or whatever else, storytelling. I'm like Rush. He's always got one. Yep. And usually there's another one to come right after that. And they just they one goes into the other, and you're like, okay, let's 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 eat or something. <laughs> yeah. And even like even things you experience with Rush, and you bring up in conversation, you're like, there's a really good story here. But Rush, can you tell the story? Because I'm gonna butcher it. I'm not a good storyteller. Yeah. Um, my brain is too factual. I'm too to the point. So my stories are like three minutes long, and they're boring. Yeah. Rush, like a two minute story that I would tell turn it into a 20 minute production <laughs> exactly yeah there's something to be said about that i mean sometimes you know you can have enough of it but um you know t okay so we're obviously we're talking about this individual who's we're both friends with and stuff and it, people may know or may not know who we're talking about so that's a personal thing but on a professional side of things you know being able to convey and tell a good story you know that brings people on board yeah, you know, like a good company has got to have a good story. I've got a, I got a great example for you, <laughs> and everybody can look this up. Famous comedian, also from Mississippi, Jerry Clower. So Jerry Clower started as a fertilizer salesman in the Delta. He played football at Mississippi State University, and then he graduated, went into sales, and would go around the state try to get farmers and feed stores, whoever else, to buy his fertilizer from the company he worked for but while he was doing that he would tell stories of his life and it turned into a comedy career and you can look up all of his stories i just shared this while you were talking i just pulled up uh you know on google and then switched over the screen to uh check him out yeah moorhead state public radio yeah yep he uh he you can you can look into and dive into his his storytelling and his path of getting signed to different companies and things. And yeah. he didn't want to get signed to anybody. I think, I don't remember if this is factual or not, but he tells it, he's like, I'm, I want to get signed to somebody that Johnny cash got signed to or somebody big. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to get, and if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go all in. If I'm gonna do but, it, let's do it. I like that. And he did. And, uh, he is a tremendous storyteller. And once you listen to his work, you will hear that, 15% truth, 85%. We need to get Rush signed to Johnny, Johnny Cash's label then. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, um, you know, you're familiar with TED Talks. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times, you know, they blew up and there's some, sometimes I can, I can get really like, you know, come like just hit me with some info. I don't need all the fluff, yeah. which is, which I think again is a is a key to good storytellers. If if you open with, you know, I'm gonna start off by telling you a little story. It's like, ugh, don't, you know, <laughs> don't just give me the data. There, I guess there's like a, the aspect of like knowing yourself, knowing your audience, yeah, and whatever information that you're trying to convey. It's all about time. It's like it's, I'm glad you brought up the comedian because it's it's like a joke. It's like the key to any good joke is what timing yeah you know and I, th I think that's storytelling as well i bring up the ted talks thing for a reason though because there's two guys that i've seen that do this where their ted talk is about nothing except that it's to show you the power of conveying yeah. and i can sit here and you know so so think about this for a moment here's a slide Right? Here's a chart. Here's another chart. Now, if you compare those two charts together, all of that data means nothing. So what have we learned today? Right? And it's just like the, yeah. the whole thing is about, no <laughs> is about nothing, but it's just the, 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 the showmanship 
and the presentation and storytelling is I don't know. Probably link that down below for anybody that wants to watch. I can't. I don't know the name of that guy. And like I said, I found two of those that are I thought were funny. You know, I, we kind of switching gears a little bit, but you know the power of the the power of storytelling. You know, we don't we we can and we can see how we want to go down this this path of you know spiritual and religion and things like that. But you know, the biggest thing is like the storytelling, like in the Bible and and all of that stuff. You know, I mean. It had to have been storytelling for the longest time. It wasn't written down. You know, so yeah. you talk about an impact. It's like, that's a pretty, you know, the power of storytelling is pretty freaking significant. Yeah. Um, and, and that's I've, a that's a good segue into books versus movies. So if you yeah. think of um, The Passion yeah. of the Christ, that movie, versus reading it in the Bible, Whew. having that visual representation of the crucifixion is so impacting even for people who may not pick up a bible and you know they want to see what this christianity thing is all about mm -hmm. they have this movie that's going to take them what two hours we'll just say two hours i'm not sure how long passion is but two hours to watch this movie versus x amount of hours to read the bible and then understand where and when to look mm -hmm. but you have the passion of the christ it has a direct point talks about the crucifixion of christ and you have a visual representation of that. Yeah. And that's pretty impactful. So yeah. what are your thoughts on books versus movies? Mm, the, you know, I, okay. Long answer here. I think books are so important for the deep dive, right? Um, because there, there's usually so much imagery that you can pack in a book. Now, the visual aspect, actually being able to see something, I think is super important and super impactful. But it's a lot of times um, the amount of information you can put in a book and, cr and let the reader envision, yes, the story, but their own story. Yeah. So, like, you, if, if, if you're going to create the scene, you know, like, all right, so, uh, I'm, I'm reading this little audio or listening to this little audio book right now. It's talking about, it's like this bank heist and it's giving you a description of the layout of the building. And yeah. even though it's describing that you see it, you know, I, I bet if I, if I could just talk to chat GBT or something, if I, if I had the ability, we both did to go into some software and like, like if we created what they're telling you, they would look different. I imagine. Yeah, Absolutely. Right, so I think that's one, extremely interesting, but also very important. Whereas a movie, we're going to see the same thing. Now, the interesting part there too is that both of them, in any story, it's going to convey something, you know, maybe different to you than it would to me. You know, yeah. um, but I think both have their place and are both equally important. I, you know me. I love a movie. I'm a yeah. big, big movie guy, big film guy, and uh, that's also because I don't think that I'm just like such an avid reader. I think I struggled reading for quite some time, so that's why I like different forms of media or mediums. And um, that's that's the same for me. Like when I pick up a book, I love reading, um, but I get so caught up in my head of the imagery of what's going on that I kind of stop reading. And I start to visualize and try to work out things in my brain. Whereas with a movie, I can see it. I know what they're talking about. I know who's talking. It's like with a podcast that doesn't have a video or whatever. I find myself, if I'm on a new podcast, stopping the podcast, going to look up who the what? authors are uh -huh. and see what their face looks like. You kind of kind of step out of it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I, 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 I can be with you on that. I do that a lot with reading. Um, so I think books have a, have their wonderful place. I mean, there's so much room for imagination and your own interpretation, but I'm, I'm more in line with movies also for the fact that it's two hours and I'm done with a book. It could take me a while, which <laughs> yeah. probably says more about my, my reading ability than anything. I but, was definitely going to say, if I pick up a book, I'm in it for a little long haul. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I look around my desk and I've got five, eight books here. 
yeah. that I've picked up every now and then and read. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, and the, the, you're, I like that you brought up the podcast too, because usually, you know, one, I, I talk about Jordan Harbinger all the freaking time. He and Patrick O'Shaughnessy invest like the best. They have on some really awesome and interesting and like thought provoking guests. Yeah. And to me, that's like super inspiring, you know, and kind of like something that I would love this to maybe take us some direction to, you know, if we could, you know, later, like it's like this episode, maybe we'd have somebody on that's an awesome storyteller. You know, they don't have to be super freaking famous or anything, but like somebody that could really give some input on what is a good story, how to construct it, you know, the importance of, but I find it that you're right about, say like if I'm traveling in a car and I'm driving to Hattiesburg or something, um, I can find myself, it's almost like a form of meditation yep. for me <clears throat> where I'll listen to a podcast and, and I'm listening, but inevitably I can zone out, just, you know what I'm saying? Like next thing you know, I'm kind of like, all right, wait, I just, now I'm back to reality. I'm like, oh, sh- I didn't, I just missed what they were saying. Yeah. And I can do that with reading too. Yeah, I do that big where, time. Bad. Where like I'll I'll read a paragraph and I'm not I don't know how that I don't know how that's possible. Like I'm reading and then I but I'm totally thinking about something else and I'm like you you you're done with the paragraph or that page and you're like, "Okay, I okay, truly I have no idea what that just said." You yeah. got to go back and read. Speaking of, it takes me 2 months to read, you know, 5 pages. Yeah. Whereas a movie you know, for me when, I, when there's something visual and it, like I am locked in so much so and I think this is why too for me I, I get engaged with that story I really immerse myself you know me I'm a psychopath I'm a crazy person I'm different people <laughs> I truly like envelop that character or one of the characters and or like see myself put myself in those shoes and it's easier for me to do that visually in that story yeah. so I like movies because I can stay with them I feel like I'm, I'm like, I'm super engaged. Um, but I definitely, back to what we were saying earlier, I definitely think that like books and podcasts and other mediums are extremely important. And there's a lot of value that I take from like good storytelling in those mediums as well. Yeah, definitely. And I find that more so, um, I'm prior service military. Uh, so if I'm a book versus a movie, when it comes to military history, I want to read the book. Mm. And that's interesting because I'm more so a movie guy, but with the books, there's more facts that go into it. Um, I've already kind of, for the most part, studied and seen some of those things in my head. So we'll just yeah. like, for example, like a World War II book. Like I've been to a concentration camp. Uh, my granddad collected a bunch of World War II memorabilia. Yeah, we studied it a lot as a kid. And so I kind of already have those visualizations of the facts and what things look like, where things occurred. I know what the beach at Normandy look like, those type of things. So when I read the book, I'm not jumping from one place to another and visualizing. I already have that in my brain. Yeah. It's easy to read. Yeah. The crazy thing about, too, it's like, so like, and the one thing that I really appreciate about books is what we're talking about. The amount of information that can be conveyed and put in a book drastically outweighs what you can do in a movie. Yep. Because you've got to use visual imagery to convey certain points. Like, yeah. for example, I mean, how many books? I mean, I, I think of like, uh, what do you, what's the what's the, the big popular one? Um, like Game of, Game of Thrones, Potter. Harry Potter. I mean, those books are freaking huge, you know? And they you've got to like, you know, even for like a two and a half hour movie, yeah. you know, and I think we've said it again, but like they each have their place and their importance of doing that. Yep. But, um, you know, I kind of okay. want to circle back. I kind of want to have, I think it'd be awesome to have somebody on that would, that is a storyteller and to be able to ask questions. That's for me and you, we, we, can, we can cut this out, but like, just no, I think that's important. Like, where did your storytelling derive from? Mm-hmm. How did you learn to tell a story? Is that something that came natural? Is that just, you know, my dad's a great storyteller and I'm not a good storyteller. And that's because I always found myself 
listening and enjoying his stories and i never really like broke down how he was telling it i yeah. guess but i don't know my dad is a great storyteller my granddad's a great storyteller i'm not so much i think i don't necessarily consider myself a great storyteller but i i i'm an impersonator yeah you know i i like to mimic people yeah. and you know i mean i you know i'll i'll quote movies because i like to mm-hmm. um so i think some of that I would I would imagine some people, you know, would 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 go down that path, of kind of imitating a good storyteller, allows you to be a good storyteller. Let's see. I was gonna pull up. I think there's a book maybe that the art of storytelling. Yeah. Um. The thing, the one thing that I find interesting too, though, is. Not even, I think the one thing that's really important is for business. Yeah. Um, There's a company called um, Nicholas Air. Okay. Kind of locally here. They're like a private jet company, you know, for companies that need to fly a lot. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, that's, they did like a little hour YouTube video and it was a great freaking story about how the business came and like, even for me, like, okay, I'm not going to need a jet anytime soon. Yeah. But, man, I, I think I met, maybe mentioned to you, but, like, golly, did that make me want to work for them? Yeah. I'm like, holy smoke. Okay, that, they got it. I like that. They're, in, you know, talking about integrity and uh, absolute customer service. And it's like, okay, you know, you would assume, like, yes, of course, to all these things. But it's how it's conveyed. I think just the importance of, of – telling it the way it was told it's like shoot yeah i think that's that's a great point you know when you're telling a story like if i go to an about us page on a company's website and they have a video that has somebody with some voice inflection (laughs) and some excitement in their voice and some visuals of what they do that's more exciting to me than me having to read it totally changes because you know for the most part your core values are going to be the same across the board for the most part vision is going to be a little different you know if you look at different airlines and you think of nicholas air like i don't know who they are but i watch this video and they're pumped up i'm getting pumped up right i want to i want to work with them exactly exactly and you're making a good point because i mean at, at the end of the day business is business and yes you know like integrity customer service uh um doing things on time doing things right like Yes, it's all the same. <laughs> you, I mean, you'd assume. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Check, check, check. But being able to convey that in the appropriate way, and like you said, getting people fired up, like that's, I think it's kind of it's hard to do too. I mean, um, certain companies and certain jobs, like you know, it's not. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a project manager for whatever, or I'm an operations manager, or I'm in sales for so and so. But it's like, you could do that for anybody, right? Yeah. You know, why do you do it for them? It's like, but well, because they do this and this and this. And I don't know. It's, I think telling the story of why the business came to be in the first place is good. So I guess we need to work on our story of making this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably could have. Maybe it's a good episode to, 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 to lead into that. Talk about that. Yeah. But I do want to kind of wrap this up with a bow and saying that. Books, movies, and podcasts, they all have their place. I think, for me, my opinion is I want to watch a movie first, and if there's a book about the movie, I would like to read that book if that's something I'm interested in. Yeah. So you brought up the series, so Harry Potter. I enjoyed watching the Harry Potter movies whenever I was a kid or younger, and so I read all the books. And then there was an immense amount of detail that wasn't there in the movie. And I enjoyed that because I enjoyed the movie. So I took the time to read the book. And that's something I knew I would enjoy. But if I had done it backwards, I don't know if I'd been excited about Harry Potter. That's what people, that's what a ton of people always say. Like, if you like the movie, then go read the book. Yeah. But oftentimes, if you read the book and then watch the movie, you're like, they left up half the information. You know, that's not even right. That's not, it's, it's not even the same movie. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then for like podcasts, I mean, obviously they've got audiobooks now, but driving down the road, it's kind of 
waste time, not waste time, but fill your time while you're in a vehicle. I think that is a very good place for podcasts. Mm -hmm. I turn a podcast on while I'm working. It's just kind of in the background, but the power of a podcast play on the episode name, but the power of the podcast is there's so many different, you know, avenues for people to convey their information or their story. Yep. And even like Joe Rogan, there's serious podcasts, there's funny podcasts. He does a realm of different things. And we all know Joe Rogan's made it. He's there. Everybody wants to be on his podcast. Who are you talking about? Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but whenever you go to Joe Rogan and you go to Theo Vaughn, I'm going to turn on Theo Vaughn because I just need something in the background. I'm going to catch a funny phrase here and there. I'm not that interested in uh -huh. who he's interviewing or whatever. Like, great podcast. Not yeah, or, not not dissing on him. Just totally yeah. different style. To, to, the yeah. reason why I choose, the reason why I click that, is when I'm wanting that. Yep. I agree. I totally could not could not agree more. They all have their time and their place. Yep. Solid. All right, y'all. Well, well, I know you brought up some different things in this episode, so we'll try to link them in the video description. Yep. Uh, pros, cons, books, movies, and podcasts. Would love to hear about them. We'll share a link to uh, to your boy, Jerry Clower. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. People need to check him R. out. RIP, my boy, Jerry. Dang, but, uh, Jerry. Hate to see it. Yep. But I think this is uh, a good segue, like you said, into us telling our story about ourselves and then the origin of this podcast that grew from our relationship. So I think we can work on that. We'll, we'll, we'll create it. We'll do like a little, um, kind of like a, a 1.1.0 or 1.5 episode where we just, you know, if people are our story, why we want to do it, what we want to share while we're doing this in the first place. Um, I think it's probably something to share with everybody. If you're interested, you know, people, some, sometimes people care and sometimes people don't, but, um, I love it. I think decent first episode, uh, we got a long way to go. We're going to pipe in animations and all this stuff later on down the road. So we're just getting started, but we got some, some fun topics we're going to talk about. And I think, too, um, the more we get comfortable with doing and sharing this, we'll liven it up and, you know, have some, have some hopefully juicy nuggets as we go. Absolutely. But as Paul Paul said, don't worry about the mule being blind. Just get on the wagon and hold the line. Hold that line, baby. Appreciate we'll it. Till next time.